Yeah, the first time I walked in EXO was kind of surreal. I stood up and I was concentrating so hard and making sure I didn't fall. And I was totally missing the moment. I was missing the moment of, hey, look, I'm six foot tall and I'm walking. Jason Geyser has everything a family man could ask for. Although he is thankful, he does hope to do some of the things every dad yearns for. You know, there's so many thoughts about my family, you know, being able to uh, stand up at your kid's ball game and cheer. After serving in the military for eight and a half years, Jason moved back to his hometown of Antioch, California, to serve his local community as a police officer. He loves spending his weekends riding his motorcycle with his police officer buddies through the local hills. I was going up the mountain on Grizzly Peak, and I have no memory of my accident, but apparently, um, you know, somehow, uh, myself and a car collided head on. Jason was rushed to the hospital and put into a medically induced coma. The hardest thing for Jason wasn't the long rehab, it was coming home. You know, the things that you can't reach, uh, the areas you can't get to. You know, part of uh, living in a chair is, you know, accepting those difficulties and, and pressing through them and just moving on. But exobionics may be making these difficulties an issue of the past. Jason is an ambassador and test pilot for EXO, which involves representing the company at demos and rehab centers across the country as a paid contractor. He also gives valuable input to engineers. Kind of threw me, threw me back a little bit. We started the, the company in 2005. Um, there were founders who came together um, from UC Berkeley, and they got a, a nice grant from the uh, Department of Defense, the DARPA uh, agency to help them to develop uh, a wearable robot for soldiers. The company made major inroads into the medical field in 2010 with the unveiling of a wearable robot. My engineer will uh, push a button uh, that allows my right leg to take a step. And then I'll do a, a weight transfer, shift my weight over to the right, uh, get ready for my left step. And when he sees that I'm in a safe position, then he'll initiate the next step. The EXO is bulky and Jason has to come to the EXO facility to walk with the aid of an engineer. But he says the benefits are more psychological than anything else. I was able to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eye, six foot tall, and, and say, you know, thank you. Um, I think that weighs more on me than the walk-in itself. The visionaries behind the company picture a future where bionic technology is part of everyday life. So we really look at the um, uh, wearable robots as the vision is really jeans that you put on in the morning and you wear during the day. Right now EXO is like the cell phone in 1980. So to think that basically EXO is in its primitive stages and it's going to be you know something like the the iPhone or the smartphones that we have now, it's exciting. I mean I can't wait. It's the new normality really and uh, something that people will not blink an eye if you see somebody walk down the street with a, with a wearable robot on. But for Jason, the more immediate opportunity Bionics presents makes all the difference. You know, my daughter's, you know, 10 years old, and it's not going to be long. It's going to be, you know, maybe another 10 years uh, before she's getting married, and she asks her dad to walk her down the aisle. For Time Video, Sean Donnelly, reporting from Berkeley, California.